Hello and welcome to another tutorial on dev.java website and we are looking at the, at the creating variables and naming them and we discussed what the variables are, why we call the member variables of a class fields, static, non-static, what are local variables, what's the concept of scoping, we talked about parameters, what's the scope of the parameters of a method and now let's look at naming variables every programming language has its own set of rules and conventions for the kind of names that you're allowed to use and the java programming language is not different so uh, java programming language specifications or uh, jls java language specifications defines a set of rules that uh, tell you basically uh, how to name the how to name the uh, basically uh, variables and there are kind of rules that are strict and the java c enforces them and there are rules that are not strict right but those are conventions that's why you see the terms rules and conventions that go together hand hand to hand here right the rules and conventions obviously conventions means this is the best practice so the java c the com java compiler doesn't enforce them note that uh, uh, jvm doesn't enforce anything JVM the job of the JVM when you type the Java command in terminal and you run your Java application the job of the JVM just is to just load the class files and run your application it doesn't do any uh, checking of the language specifications etc right so the these rules are followed at compile time Java compiler enforces them but obviously conventions are best practices which makes your code most readable if everyone follows the same set of conventions then uh, um, then uh, reading and maintaining other people's code become very easier right and uh, much easier the, th the thing here is that everyone every individual uh, has his or her own style of coding so personal style of coding is pretty much the norm everybody has them i also have my own style of coding the way uh, for example i organize my classes the naming con the naming that i use um, nobody can force you to call your class local variables or something else obviously you want to make names for your classes that um, that um, uh, are telling right names that are telling that give immediately give the user some information what this class does for example if i have a class a string for example it means uh, it's a class that represents a strings right a an array of characters if the name of a class is input a stream for example or file reader it's very obvious that what that class is doing so but if i say that the name of my class is a weird name like uh, 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 something that doesn't immediately tell the user what the what the uh, the job of the class is or the responsibility of the class is then that makes your api more difficult to understand right so naming conventions follow them naming rules even if you don't follow them java J, java compiler will refuse to uh, compile your code so you cannot run your java application and then uh, um, also be mindful of the namings that you choose right you want to make sure that not only you follow the conventions and the rules you also uh, try to make your code as easy to understand for other people as possible right variable names are case sensitive java just like c c plus um, plus uh, is case sensitive so let me create a new class uh, uh, called uh, uh, naming variables right and uh, um, also I want to go create a new package like let's just call this variables we're talking about variables and previously we created this local variables so let's move it in this uh, package variables and uh, also naming variables so um, let's also move this here in this package so we have this class naming variables variable names are case sensitive which means that I can have a variable double a uh, let's call it a uh, variable and note that I'm following the convention of uh, um, uh, uh, the camel case this is a convention this is not rule uh, the, as uh, the compiler doesn't ca uh, care if this V is capitalized or not I can use it this as soon as save it it clicks recompile the class and it works fine I can use underscore here that's also fine this is the a snake case notation which we do not recommend um, uh, for Java the recommendation for the name of the variables is obviously a camel case so camel case again I want to emphasize that this is a naming uh, this is a naming convention which means the Java compiler doesn't enforce this uh, this rule it's a rule that is convention so Java C does not enforce it right 
So th that's the difference between a convention and a rule. All right, but I can also have say A, capital A uh, variable, 2.5. So case sensitivity means that uh, um, uh, the, the letters might be the same, but if uh, they're not exactly the same, which means Java compiler differentiate between, between lowercase uh, uh, letters, lowercase characters and uppercase characters, then these are different. So I can say a lowercase x, and obviously if I have another one with the same uh, exact lowercase x, in the same scope, know that this is the key. You cannot have name collision in the same scope. And right now I'm in the scope of the class. We had a very in-depth conversation about what the meaning of in, in, uh, a scope is. So you can refer to my previous talks or lectures on the dev.java website to see what this is. But if I change this to an uppercase X, right now I have the same name X uh, in the same scope, but these are not the same to Java compiler and hence to the JVM, right? J Java compiler compiles this. Basically, Java compiler allows this to compile, allows this class to compile. And then uh, Java, the JVM then doesn't care about what's going on, right? Because name of the variables don't have any meaning in uh, in a, inside the JVM, it's just the values, right? These are placeholders for memory addresses, especially if you're coming from a language like C, C++. These variables are just placeholders for memory addresses, and it's very easier for the user in the source code to deal with the names of variables instead of directly manipulating memory addresses, right? So case sensitivity, so this is the idea of case sensitive naming, right? two variables with the same name in the same scope as long as uh, they're not exactly the same letters uh, they are allowed if the the case is exactly the same then uh, you're not allowed to use them in the same scope a variable's name can be any legal identifier and unlimited length so that's another thing uh, and i believe it's the, the all of the programming languages at this point they allow unlimited length for the name of the um, of the variables because again a variable is just a placeholder for the memory address so i can just have unlimited number of x a, 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 a. and this is still one variable obviously it's a very it's a very bad naming right so you have to make your variable names short but make them uh, uh, very telling very very informative and that's one of the things for example in c plus plus and c people usually type a very um uh, short names you want to let's say you want to say this holds the price of an object you can say double p but uh, this is not recommended in java in java the best practice is actually type the name tell it what is the price of an uh, uh, item for example so this is the best uh, uh, practice in java you have to make your names telling why first of all that's because uh, you never end up typing this name again so let's say uh, uh, price of an item that uh, will uh, be used later right so i mean you might say okay this is very if i'm trying if i make the name like this very long then it's very um very tedious to every time i want to use this variable somewhere i have to type this but first of all that's not the case because of the ids so again i mentioned this before and i'm going to say it again um if you're doing programming you have to use an I if you're doing java programming or any statistically, statistically type language like um, any statistic, uh, uh, statically typed language like C or C++, you have to use an ID. And then uh, let's say I um, create a method. So let's say public public double uh, get uh, price, right? And you want to just return this. All you have to say uh, say return price and then the other complete kicks in and then you never you just type a few first letters so that the other the the, I, uh, the id can uh, uh, filter out some of the names right so pri and the id has already given you the best suggestion ids are very smart and intelligent so don't shy away from writing type names if they give more information they become more telling that's the best practice in java all right so don't shy away from this because uh, your ID will definitely help you a lot. And you you just type it once and you never end up typing the entire name again because the, I, the autocomplete, autocomplete feature uh, kicks in and uh, makes your life uh, much, much easier. All right, an unlimited length sequence of Unicode letters and Java allows you UTF-16, Unicode 16 characters. Um, Unicode 16 characters, uh, for example, in the source code. So in the source code, uh, 
uh, what this means is so this is Java unfortunately languages like C++ don't allow that so C++ ended up with uh, Unicode uh, uh, 8 right UTF 8 Note that this is the source code. I mean, after you compile, your, for example, after your C++ compiler compiles your code, uh, um, uh, then uh, you end up with assembly code, machine code, right? Machine instructions, unless you have uh, actual uh, strings or characters in your source code, things that are going to be printed to the console. Then that becomes obviously platform dependent based on your operating system, what kind of encodings is the default for the terminal because you want to print something to the terminal. If the terminal doesn't have that encoding, the support for that type of encoding. For example, let's say in your source code, you want to show some sort of, uh, um, uh, I don't know, Japanese character or something else. So there are a lot of uh, characters that are not by default part of the English uh, alphabet. So UTF-8 is uh, backward compatible with ASCII, right? And ASCII supports, uh, fully supports, uh, uh, fully supports English alphabet, right? English uh, alphabet. So if, you're, uh, if your source code doesn't have any weird characters. Now, uh, none of the keywords uh, are, uh, uh, Unicode, you never, all basic programming languages are in English, right? So you end up definitely your source code, keywords, whatever is part of the language specification is compatible with ASCII. But then let's say you want to have a, a string that has a weird name. So a string uh, A equals, let's say I want to have a Japanese character here or a Chinese character. These are not part of the English alphabet, right? So you have to use some sort of unicoding and if it's not allowed in your, in your source code if it's not compatible with the utf-8 then you cannot do it in c++ java allows that any character that is part of utf-16 uh it's allowed which is nice i mean the downside here is the memory usage is obviously uh, worse uh, because utf-16 requires two bytes utf-8 requires one byte that's also the reason that in c++ you had you have the char type which is one byte and um, obviously uh, this already automatically defines UTF-8 characters, right? Uh, in Java, um, any character is, uh, so if you say uh, um, uh, char B is, uh, what, uh, is some character A, right? This is a UTF-16 character and then uh, uh, it basically occupies two bytes, right? Not one byte. All right, so uh, Unicode, UTF-16, and digits. So digits are allowed in the name. So A1, A2, B2, etc. This is allowed. Uh, beginning with a letter. So the the only limitation is that the name uh, name cannot start with a letter. So uh, you cannot say you cannot say car B three uh, B instead of B three equals uh, B for example. So the compiler doesn't allow the name of a ca of the variable to start with a letter, and uh, you have to uh, doesn't allow to start with a number, right? It's the first digit or the first character of the name of the variable cannot be a number, and this is also enforced in other languages like the C++ or even Python. So you cannot do this. So you have to say B3, for example. This is allowed. And again, uh, the fact that the IDs have this kind of intelligence to immediately give you visual feedback, that's great because you don't waste your time trying to compile and then see where the errors, errors are and try to go and find them. Uh, the dollar sign or underscore uh, character. So, uh, so you, your, the name can start with a uh, letter or a dollar sign, I believe this is also allowed. You can start with a dollar sign or you can also start with the underscore. Now, the thing here is that I think uh, from uh, right now, I'm using uh, runtime Java uh, 16. So I believe uh, my uh, project compiler, Java compiles also Java 16. Uh, I think at some point, either JDK 15 or 16, uh, they removed uh, the, this, uh, the use of uh, double underscore, I believe, or single underscore, I'm not sure. But um, um, just know that they prefer that you don't, you never use any underscoring in the, your uh, Java, the variables in your Java source code. There are reasons for that. Um, but again, the best practice, don't ever use underscore in the names on your, of your variables unless absolutely necessary. And never 
uh, expose uh, those variables that have underscore or do those variables that don't follow the convention for naming as a public variable never impose them again unless absolutely necessary so the best practice is that your public API should follow the conventions because then other programmers other developers quickly understand what's going on right so you can your variables can start with a dollar sign or an underscore uh, this I'm not sure about maybe double underscore they I'm sure that they put some restrictions uh, in the most recent versions of the JDK whether you are allowed to use a single score or a single underscore double underscore the convention however is to always begin your variable names with a letter not dollar or um, underscore right so uh, don't use dollar sign that's the convention use with a letter because usually the name of the variable should tell what's going on a dollar sign I mean I can say care this variable's name is dollar sign it's allowed but but what does it tell the user or anyone else I mean what is this dollar sign doesn't have many meaning uh, my name of the variable can be underscore dollar so um, this doesn't tell what's going on what's the name in character but I can say this care is a uh, uh, for example first letter of a name this is very telling right this is this name is very telling and it tells exactly what's going on additionally the dollar sign character by convention is never used at all so don't ever think about using the under uh, the dollar sign it's allowed but don't ever use it especially in the name of your classes because the dollar sign is kind of uh, used internally by the java c when it compiles inner classes so um, I'm actually not sure if it's allowed. Let's see if it's allowed. So right now Eclipse tells me that uh, the public name must be defined on its own. So it says they renamed this uh, source file. Now it's allowed. So in the name of the class where it's allowed, but don't ever don't use it because uh, this uh, naming is kind of reserved. The append uh, for the inter. Uh, for the inner classes, uh, the Java compiler appends this dollar sign to the class path of the inner classes when it compiles them so dollar sign just don't for, forget it never use the dollar sign that's that's just a bad practice bad practice right what about exclamation mark so this is not used because obviously exclamation mark is part of the java language operators right so it's actually an operator so it cannot be a character because operators operators such as exclamation mark is part of the tokens that the Java C already recognizes right so you cannot have this even I believe somewhere in the middle yeah it's not allowed because this is a binary operator uh, or basically or maybe a unary operator uh, you can say not this is a not operator and then bad practice uh, okay uh, bad uh, practice uh all right so but in general operators are not allowed you cannot have plus for example in the name of a variable because this is an operator this is something that java C already recognizes also multiplication for example right so you cannot use the predefined operators that are part of the java language in uh, as a character in your name now those are allowed for uh, strings obviously uh, strings are just uh, the Java compiler doesn't actually look what's inside the string. It just says, okay, this is an a string. So whatever character is there is allowed, right? But uh, the name of the variables, Java C, Java compiler cares a lot about them and it's very sensitive to them. Uh, you may find some situations where auto-generated names will contain the dollar sign, but your variable names should always avoid using it. So there are some tools for some automation uh, uh, and those tools they have their own convention and they might you create internal variables that uh, don't follow these conventions they have dollar signs or underscore again for internal parts of your api okay if you are absolutely you absolutely need to use dollar sign or something use it never expose it as a public part of your api because that makes confusion and that's not part of the convention um, a similar convention exists for the underscore character while it's technically legal to begin your variables name with underscore this practice is discouraged white space is not permitted white space means you cannot have a space in the name of your variable because obviously the Java compiler tokenizes the source code and the white space is already the delimited uh, or the something that uh, Java C uses 
to uh, see the words, right? To identify the words that are then uh, interpreted as tokens. So if you have a space here, Java C assumes that this is one token, one word, one variable, this is another variable, and this is not allowed. Uh, you can have a comma here. This is allowed, which means now you're defining two variables, a character that has not been initialized, another character which is practice, which has been initialized with some value. And again, because this is a part of the a global scope of the class, the JVM will initialize the character to a null character. So um, basically backslash zero. Uh, this is the null characters for unit UTF-8. A UTF-16 is just uh, just uh, becomes zero 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 four zeros, right? So comma is allowed when you're defining characters. White space is not allowed. Comma is allowed because then you're telling the compiler I'm defining multiple, uh, not just one variable, more than one variable. All right, subsequent characters may be letters, digits. So the first letter, the first uh, character should be, uh, cannot be a number, cannot be a digit, but other characters uh, after the first one can be digits, dollar sign, underscore, conventions, and common sense apply to this rule as well. When choosing a name for your variables, use full words instead of cryptic abbreviations. The reason is that don't shy away from uh, typing long names because you never end up typing it again. The IDE, the autocomplete feature always, uh, as soon as you type the first few letters, the autocomplete kicks in and you just press enter and that's it, right? So you never shy away from writing long names if they are very informative. Obviously, if you just type a long name that doesn't convey any information, that's a bad practice and you shouldn't be doing it in the first place, right? Use full words instead of cryptic abbreviations. Doing so will make your code easier to read and understood by other people, not just by yourself, but also by other people. So in general, whenever you develop an API and uh, for the public parts of your API, always think about uh, what other people would uh, understand based on your code. I mean, obviously uh, the best practice is to make the public part of your API as easy as possible for other people to understand, all right? The internals can be very complex and complicated. That's fine, that's for you. And maybe other people who are collaborating with you to maintain a code base or develop an application, that's fine. But for an outside user, always think about the easiest public API that you can provide. Doing so will make your code easier to read and understood. In many cases, it will also make your code self-documenting. Obviously, uh, we haven't talked about the doc Java, uh, Java source code documentation, but also, yeah, when the, you have a name that tells exactly what, what value it holds, so 2.5, this might not ha might have, this might not have any meaning, this number in any context, but when you give the variable a, a, um, a useful name, like price of an item, and then the ID tells me that you have to uh, uh, rename this. So let's just say price of an item. This is very telling that, okay, this 2.5 is actually the price of something. Fields name the cadence, speed, and gear. So these are, let's say you have a class that has this kind of names for its fields, for its member variables. It's very understand, very easy to understand. Okay, if the, the name of a variable or field is speed, it's very telling that uh, what, what kind of uh, interpretation we have to assign to this variable. For example, are much more intuitive than abbreviated versions like S or G such as S, C, and G. Also keep in mind that the name you choose must not be a keyword or a reserved word. The exception is the var, right? We said that uh, at the moment var is not a reserved keyword because it doesn't have, it, it, you cannot use var in the global scope of the class. In the local scope, it's allowed. And uh, you can very much define a variable name var, 25 for example. This is very much allowed because var is not actually a keyword. Now, interesting enough, we have this const that was reserved as a keyword, but it was never used in the Java language implementation. So you cannot use const. So for example, I cannot have a double variable with the name const because const is a keyword. Uh, um, but it's never been used. I mean, const has no implementation in Java language at the moment, right? 
if I say const one, for example, this is allowed because this is not a keyword, but const itself is a keyword. All right. Um, if the name you choose consists of only one word, spell that word in all lowercase letters. So just one word. Let's say if you want to say just price, just lowercase is very easy to type. If it has more than one part, you want to use the convention of camel case. If it consists of more than one word, capitalize the first letter of each subsequent word. The name's a gear ratio. You see, we have two words, gear and ratio. And the second one has the first letter capitalized. And uh, current gear are prime examples of this convention. Now, at the moment, my Eclipse ID, I haven't set it up to check for this kind of uh, uh, conventions. So I can say price of an uh, item is 10. Now, obviously, immediately you can see that this is really hard to read. Price of, it, you can read it of Pricio Fanitem. So it's not easy to read, but once you have some sort of a, a, a way of telling the user uh, how to differentiate different words, what are the different words that this name is made of, it's very easy. And the camel case is the convention is uh, in Java. Right now, my ID doesn't give me any warning, anything. So it's not set up to check for this kind of conventions. All IDs have support. You can set them up so that they also uh, uh, enforce these conventions, tell you, and then you can also set it up such the way that if it's not following the conventions, it can even give you compilation error. Remember, IDs use their own compiler, Java compiler. They follow the uh, reference implementation of the Java C that the JDK provides, but they're not using the Java C that comes with the JDK. They use their own internal compiler because they add much more uh, complexity because they want to be able to be customized. Java C is not really that customizable, but your Eclipse compiler is customizable. You can tell it to, hey, I want you to also warn me if there is some naming that doesn't follow the camel case, etc. Maybe in the one of the future lectures, I'll show you how to set it up, set, set up Eclipse so that it can warn you or even give you compilation error when you're not following this kind of naming conventions. Uh, in other languages like Python, you have linters. Linters are statically uh, checking. They check the source code in a static way, and then they can tell you if you're following the Python uh, conventions or not. Same for Java. I mean, Java IDs are very strong, and uh, it's good to have this kind of IDs available. All right, if your variable stores a constant value, and these are typically compile time constants, such as a static final int, uh, uh, this variable num underscore gears equals six, the convention uh, changes slightly, capitalize every letter and separating uh, subsequent words with the underscore characters. By convention, the underscore character is never used elsewhere. So what's the best practice for using underscore in your variable name? So single underscore, for example, is when you have a compile time uh, uh, constant variable. Compile time constant variable in Java means it's a public or private. I mean, public is more uh, uh, more uh, con uh, more widely used, right? Public, a static, final. The reason it's a static is that we want to expose it to the user and telling that, okay, you can directly access this. So it's public, it's static. It doesn't really belong to a state of a class because this is just a constant. So no matter how many instances of this class we create, we just have, uh, it's just, just a number constant, right? Final uh, uh, price or maybe let's say uh, cookie, cookie price. Uh, 25.1 and obviously we have to tell it what's the type of this variable double so compile time constant variables in uh, Java are public are a static final and you tell it what type it is and um, the the convention here is that all caps all caps right so we're not following the camel case notation all caps separate uh, uh, with a single underscore that's the convention for compile uh, time constants. And usually uh, if you use this somewhere else, for example, let's say here we're going to say price of an item times uh, cookie price. 
and uh, what happens here is that the compiler actually replaces this with a, a value right so um, uh, the compiler re realizes that th this the value of this variable can never be changed during the runtime when you run your application because this is a final variable a final variable and it's a static so it's not associated with a class so no class can change this or basically no matter how you create a instance of this class this is supposed to be the same so any final means this cannot be changed after you assign you initialize this variable so the compiler says okay what's the point of uh, each time uh, trying to uh, read this what, there is no need to jump to other parts of the uh, basically bytecode to see what the value of this is because the compiler says I already know what the value is and the there is a guarantee that the value of this variable can never be changed at runtime because it's final that's why the compiler just replaces this with price of an item times 25.1 and we can also I believe check on this so if I open this uh, uh, um, so let's see local variable uh, dot class if I open this uh, right now I am decompiling it with a decompiler so let's open it with a class file viewer and we are going to look at the get price method so um, no uh, sorry not the local variable naming variable so instead of decompiling this I am going to open it up with this one and uh, naming variable. this is the constructor so um, method get price so method get price um, it's in the constant pool of the class it has a method descriptor uh, number 46 it's an add so the constant pool of a class is array of uh, basically uh, ASCII or Unicode uh, basic characters that identify what's the name is etc and also the signature of the method doesn't take any parameter returns a double you load the this reference because this is a non-static method get field uh, price of an item and uh, note that what so when when it tries to return the multiplication of the price of an item times that constant cookie price note that it has an instruction to jump to this field and read the value of this field and it has to be double right so the JVM jumps and reads this value note that what happens next it says that load constant LDC load constant 2 and it's a white right w means it's a white and then double it's double 25.1 so it loads a constant value it doesn't uh, jump to uh, to where the cookie price variable is defined because the compiler realizes that, that variable there is no need at compile time the compiler knows and obviously there is a double multiplication dmal means double multiplication d return means return a double value right so this very simple basically what happened here is that the compiler optimized away this uh, constant because whenever you have a static final field it's a compile time constant compiler knows what the value is and compiler knows that there is a guarantee that this value is never going to be changed because it's a final variable right so compiler replaces this cookie price this variable with the 25.1 and at runtime uh, you have to jump to the where this uh, price of an item this variable is defined to see what the actual value is right but then when you come back it just multiplies it directly with 25.1 it doesn't jump to this variable to see what the value is because there is no point uh, by convention the underscore character is never used elsewhere unless uh, exception is always for the uh, 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 constant variables constants are all caps separate each word with a underscore and then these are typically a static final and because these are constant there is a static final there is no harm in exposing it as a public variable because again even the user at runtime or even at compile time if the user uses your api and they directly access this they can never assign a new value value to this variable because it's final that's it as soon as you initialize it once there is no way to change the value so I hope you enjoyed this lecture and now have a good understanding of the naming variables and the conventions we follow in Java. Please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.